IBM says it is trying to manage in an industry facing unprecedented change. Monday's sale of its chip making unit shows the company is shifting to focus on the cloud. But IBM is not alone. As you can see, its competitors are also to trying to get their head in the cloud. HP, Cisco, Oracle, and Microsoft are all vying for a piece of the business. Another competitor, SAP, proved Monday that complications from cloud computing can affect earnings. SAP cut its 2014 profit forecast because it couldn't keep up with customer demand for cloud-based products. Trouble is, it's a crowded cloud. The likes of Amazon and Google already dominate the business. Shelley Palmer is author of Digital Wisdom, and he joins me now. Shelly, that's all we're hearing is the cloud these days. Is there room for everybody in the cloud? Well, everybody wants to be in the cloud, but there not only is there not room for everybody in the cloud, it's not clear what the cloud is. Thank you, because that is exactly my question. It sounds like a word a lot of us talk about. Very so few of us truly understand. Let's start there. Cloud is simply a proxy for a remote server in a location to you. So it's the same server you had in your company, except it's somewhere else now. Most importantly, it's accessible over the public internet. That's really the only defining value of the cloud. And the software that makes a server virtual or able to be virtualized, meaning you take a big rack of gear and you make it something that's accessible from the internet, is available to everyone from open source, which is totally free, mm -hmm. to semi-open source with a little bit of restrictions and maybe an owner's manual around it, to very strict and you know very um, businessized, if you will. And so there's this ridiculous heterogeneous world called the cloud that everyone seems to call one thing, but it's a million little things. And if I'm a business, I don't necessarily need to use Google's cloud or mm -hmm. Amazon's cloud or Joe's cloud or Harry's cloud. I can use my own because the tools to do that are actually relatively simple. Well, the, I'm glad you brought that up because it sounds like, based on what you described, that this is an incredible uh, inflection point that levels the playing field. Really if does. you're a little guy, you didn't have to have all that capital and invest in the products that the likes of IBM were selling. So where does it leave those legacy players? So it's, it's, first of all, this is the big strategic question. The metaphor everyone always used was the metaphor of the power grid. Mm. The vice president electricity was the highest tech guy at the turn of the last century because his job was making the generators work. And in the industrial age, if you needed electricity to run your company, the vice president of electricity made those generators work in-house. But within... 25, 30 years, by the early 20s, mid-30s, he was replaced, his job was replaced by a line item called electricity, and municipal power grids were pretty much how everyone got their power. And the metaphor everyone's used is, well, the cloud is going to take over, I'm not going to have my local computer anymore, I'm not going to have iron stacks, racks and stacks in my company, I'm going to farm this all out to the cloud because it's better there. But the metaphor breaks down when you realize that what makes a server somewhere else and a server you have in your office better or different really is not the same. I don't need the same tools I need to generate power to make my servers available to the public internet mm -hmm. in a secure way. And so the strategic question comes, as companies realize that putting all their stuff in someone else's hands isn't maybe a great idea, possibly just the software for making it happen done in-house is a better use of time and resources and possibly safer. Every day we hear about some kind of crazy right. hack or some kind of breach. Is Amazon better at defending than I am? Yes, absolutely. Are they better at somebody whose core business is defending? Not necessarily. So the question for me is, are, are, is, are the likes of IBM in a position to, to sort of grab that business and maybe define it? Because let's be frank, I, I'm sure there are a lot of small business owners out there who can benefit from the cloud but don't understand it any better than we did before you just explained it. Are they in a position to do that? Or is that already being done by smaller, nimbler players because there's all sorts of Dropbox and Box? So and when you start thinking about big companies like IBM, it's a sociology question, not a technology question. Large corporations tend to want to work with large corporations because there's this kind of idea that, well, if I hired IBM, I won't get fired. And that, you know, from the old days, you know, no one ever got fired for buying an IBM computer. Right. It used to be the way people described, and it actually became a pejorative phrase at a certain point, right? Mm -hmm. Because what it said is, I'm old, stodgy, I'm not willing to try something new, but it's super safe. You know what? When you're talking about the books and records of the company, when you're talking about people's records and their contact information and stuff that we read about every day, 
you know what? I might want to trust IBM if I'm a corporate person. So big corporations tend to work with big corporations. Mm -hmm. That's going to be fascinating now because, as you've just said, there are lots of small entities coming, chipping away at what we perceive to be these large tech giants who should be invulnerable. They're anything but. And this is an inflection point, and we are at a time when there is going to be a major shift strategically at every corporate level. I want to be best for my company. Does that mean working with an IBM, a Microsoft, an Oracle? A Google and Amazon, maybe it doesn't anymore. So, but we shouldn't necessarily write them off. I mean, we do have CEOs in place, and I'm I'm, th I'm going to think right now of IBM. We heard Jenny Romney talking. Uh, Meg Whitman is trying to do the same thing at HP. Coincidentally, two women doing this who understand there's a massive challenge, but they're trying to turn the Titanic. Does size work against you? Does your experience matter more than the cultural baggage you carry from a very bureaucratic organization? I have to say, I would argue that IBM has done a couple of relatively large strategy shifts. In its, in its corporate life mm -hmm. so far. They used to make mainframes. That's what they did. Now they're this fantastic consulting company mm -hmm. that has all kinds of interesting research going on. Watson and all the exactly. question answering they're, technology. They are pushing the envelope it's, of they, innovation in some areas that we don't talk about. Significantly pushing, not just pushing, significantly pushing. People like to think of Google as the only innovative tech company. Mm -hmm. Please stop that. IBM is right at the forefront. And so the question you got to ask yourself is, are these executives the right executives to lead IBM through this tra challenging time? I would argue, yes, they are. And you know what? If they're not, the shareholders will let them know. So, right. Right, you know what, but for right now, IBM is doing the right thing. They've gotten out and they've said all the right things to me anyway. They've said, we understand what's happening, mm -hmm. we understand the challenges, and we're going to do our best to rise to them. And that's all any corporation can do. Are there going to be challenges? Yes. Are they challenges that are insurmountable? <laughs> you bet. Shelly, for investors who are sitting out there, should we treat anybody who talks about the cloud and their business strategy with a little bit of skepticism? And we're almost out of time, but should you be skeptical when you hear that word? Anybody who doesn't define cloud, they just talk about the cloud, peel the onion away one layer just for fun. Say, what do you mean by that? And then sit back quietly because with the next sentence is going to tell you whether it's a serious conversation or not. All right, Shelly Palmer, so great to catch up with you as always. Thank you so much for helping understand the complicated tech landscape a little bit better.